Hello, my lovelies. I am coming on to do this live today. Today's the 31st of August, and I am 25 weeks post-op. And I wanted to come and do a live because it's been a little while, and I wanted to tell you guys how I've been doing. Um, I wanted to go over, you know, stats, if anyone had questions. I've been getting a lot of DMs. Um, with a lot of questions about my journey so I figured I can answer a lot of them now I hope you guys are doing great and let's get right into it so I'm gonna start off with my stats so I'm 25 weeks post-op I am my highest weight back on give me one second let me get my paper so I can tell you guys exactly all my stats give me one second Hope you guys are doing good. I'm just gonna wait two seconds while more people get on, but I'm gonna get all my stats down so it's easier for me to remember. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna give you guys all my stats. So just give me one second. Okay, so I have my stats. All right, so my highest weight back on February 1st was of this year, 2119, was 311.8 pounds. Uh, my surgery was at in Tijuana, Mexico at Pompeii Surgical with Dr. Salcedo, and my weight was 285. So prior, I'm going to break this down to you guys because I, I get a lot of these questions. So I figured let me do the live to break everything down. Um, so prior to the two weeks uh, pre-op, as everybody knows, for VSG, vertical sleeve gastrectomy, which is this procedure I had, you have to do two weeks of a clear liquid diet. Oh, thank you so much, Mrs. Lee. Um, so we have to do a clear liquid diet two weeks prior to surgery. However, my highest weight was 311.8, which was on the 1st of February. And I said, okay, between the 1st of February and when I have to start my two weeks pre-op, I have, hey, Kendall, thank you so much. Um, so because I have 21 days between my highest weight, which was 2111, uh, 2119, to my surgery pre-op diet, I did something called a 21-day meal plan. Um, I think Jasmine losing it, and there's another girl on, I think it's Instagram, who actually did the program, uh, had lost a lot of weight naturally that way. And I was like, you know what, let me jumpstart my pre-op, because if for me, being realistic, if I go into my pre-op diet, and I go into it with no, you know, buffer or like already starting something, I'm going to fail. And I know myself. Like, let's be real. Some of us are, are have, have done Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers. I've done everything. South Beach Diet, Atkins, Local. I've done all of those prior to surgery. And they all didn't work. So I was like, let me do. It's not the 21 day fix. It's called the 21 day meal plan. Um, thank you. If you guys go to my YouTube channel or if you guys go to my Instagram, which is Sue Lady VSG, S U E L A D Y V S G. Thank you, Tanisha. Um, if you guys go on there, you'll see what I did before. If you go on my YouTube channel, I actually posted everything that I did on my YouTube channel prior to actually doing the weight loss. Um, and I, I, I talked about it a little bit and I'll link it down somewhere, you know, after I finish the video, but I did a 21 day meal plan and between my highest weight, which was February 1st, that I started the 21 day meal plan and the day of surgery, which was on March 8th, um, I actually had already lost quite a few pounds. Be Thank you, Marianne. Um, so my highest weight was 311.8 on February 1st. Then by the time I hit surgery weight, which was 3819, which was about a month and seven days, I was down to 285. So right there alone, I had lost, what is that, like 
30 something pounds um i think 10 pounds contributed to the clear liquid diet but the rest of that was all the 21 day meal plan so i did that after that my surgery weight was 285 even the day of surgery mind you i had clothes on so it might have been a little less but you know now i'm 25 weeks post-op i'm 204.8 so I've lost 107, I think it's like 107.2 pounds in 25 weeks. And I have not hit one stall. A lot of people ask me, and I don't say that boastfully or like trying to say, oh, you know, like I'm not saying it in that fashion, but I haven't. I haven't stalled not one week. I haven't gone one week without at least dropping something. Given one of the weeks I only dropped like 0.2 pounds, but it's still a loss. Whether you lose 0.2 pounds or whether you lose one pound or whether you lose 15 pounds a loss is a loss and I'm proud of every single loss that I've had um, a lot of people ask me I have loose skin girl everyone you look if you losing a hundred plus pounds everyone's gonna have loose skin like I've got you see that yeah I've, I've got it I've got tons of loose skin just like everybody like don't be ashamed of it. Yeah, mama's gonna get a whole mommy makeover. You best believe I'm gonna get a mommy makeover at the end of next year. Once I lose all the weight that I wanna lose, then I'm gonna tone and I'm gonna make sure that I work as hard as possible to get all the fat off as possible. Then I'm gonna have the tummy tuck brachioplasty. Uh, the brachioplasty is the arms. I'm gonna do a breast augmentation and I'm gonna maybe a lower body, lift. I'm not sure yet. But I'm definitely going to have plastic surgery because I'm not going to lose all this weight to be a bag of skin. Not going to happen. Um, and I'm not ashamed of that either. I'll show you guys what I use. I use a Faha every day. I'm going to show y'all. Because everybody's like, oh, you, you know, you're not regular because most people have loose skin. I have tons of loose skin, y'all. I just don't show it to the world because, you know, I'm not completely comfortable being naked. <laughs> Which I'm, I'm all for people who feel empowered to do that. But I'm not comfortable with it. So I'm not going to, you know, post certain pictures. But I will show you guys. Now, I'm not going to show you my, you know, me, me, me. But I'll show you what, you know, what I look like. So. So this is a size, I think it's a size 10 or 12. I have tons. Look, I've got tons of loose skin i just wear fajas all the time see like this without a faja see this is loose skin and i'm not ashamed of it it is what it is but this is what i look like with clothes on and i still have look you know that i can't really show it whatever i still have this I'm in no way like the perfect body whatsoever. However, we're working on it. Let me see, I'm 285, I'm considering a sleeve. Skin scares me because I already have a bunch of food baskets already. <laughs> well, Kendall, look, if you're gonna lose, I'm, so let me give you my stats. I'm 5'4", thank you, Haley. Um, I'm 5'4", I'm gonna be 33 in November. I had three pregnancies, two children. I have three step kids, so when you see my page, you're gonna be like, wait, three pregnancies, but you have five kids. I have five kids, there's three step kids and two biological children. I have a four year old and a 13 year old. Um, I am gonna be 33, and so I'm 32, and I'm 5'4. So, loose skin comes with the territory, guys. Don't be afraid that you're gonna have loose skin. I rather have loose skin. I'll tell you guys in a minute about the fa. So I rather get or have loose skin than not be able to take my kids and run around with them. I rather have loose skin than not be able to go up the stairs or be unhealthy. I totally prefer loose skin because you know you can make clothes look good and you can get fajas and stuff to cover it up and if you really don't like it you can get surgery to fix it and that's what i'm gonna do yeah, i'm five four i'm 24 and i have two children and my skin is insane already but they can just cut <laughs> yes absolutely you can always look just like we went and got surgery to get 
this whole thing situated, we can totally, thank you so much, Tracy, we can totally go and get surgery to get the extra skin off. You know, don't be afraid of extra skin because even though you can have extra skin, you can save and get rid of it. Um, you know, just like we saved for the surgery, which most people pay cash because they don't take insurances. You know, just like we saved for the surgery, we can save for the loose skin removal. Plain and simple. You know, I think that, and this, some people may take this as a negative, and some people may take this as a positive, but I say this coming from a warm heart. I never say things to hurt anybody. But worrying about loose skin is an excuse not to get healthy. And I know that sounds harsh, but I made that excuse plenty of times. I told myself, I'm not going to do it because I know I'm going to... Yeah, if you lose 100 pounds, you, mama going to have loose skin. Get over it. Like, my boobs are deflated. I'm going to show you. I'm not going to show my tits, but... Like, if you look, my... Like, this is this is loose skin. Mind you, I'm still a double D. I'm, I'm a 30, 38 double D, and I was a 44 triple D before. It is what it is. They're deflated. <laughs> That's why I'm going to get a boo job. Um, I'm not worried about it. You know, my relationship and my husband and I are in a great place where I know he's with me. He was with me when I was big. He he met me big. So he's like new self-discoveries right now and he's loving everything. And he's like, look, whether you were 300 pounds or whether you are 160 pounds, as my goal is 160 to 165, I'm going to love you regardless and I'm going to support you. And I know that this is a process. And he understands that and he's okay with that. We've had that conversation. If you're doing this for your significant other, you need to rethink who you're with. Because if you feel that you have to be pressured to do this for your significant other, then that's not the reason to do it. The reason to do it is for your own purpose, for you know, wanting to better yourself, to wanting to add a lot years to your life. Um, and that has to be clear. And that has to be something that, yeah, can you talk to your significant other? Absolutely. If that person doesn't want to hear you out, you need to rethink who you're with. And I'm not judging anybody. However, think about your mental health. Think about your physical health. So these are all things to really think about. I, I, I It took me two years to decide to do this. Two years ago, prior to surgery, I knew I needed to make a change. However, it took me two years of researching. I went back to school to become a biology major just to learn about how my body works. Because I needed to make sure that if I'm making this huge lifestyle change for my family, I want to make sure that I know everything I, I can about it. And if you can't afford to go to school just to learn about it, don't do it. Go to the library. It's free. I got tons of books at the library about how my body works, how, about you know surgery, about bariatric patients about being heavy about the mental part of it the mental part of it is 80 percent of it because we can easily tell ourselves how we can easily find a hundred reasons why not to do something to make ourselves not go ahead and make our lives better and i'm not saying surgery is it for everybody absolutely not surgery is not the answer for it some people can lose it on their own and great um but some people can't so at the end of the day, we need to ask ourselves, what is best for me? That is the only thing that matters. What's the best for other people doesn't matter. A lot of people ask me, let me go back to, let me stop preaching. <laughs> Thanks, Melody. I'm, I don't want anybody to think, okay, she's preaching, blah, 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 blah. However, these are all things that are just the truth, to be honest with you. Let me read some of these comments down here. Thank you for everyone saying that I look nice i really appreciate that i'm living in la vida fupa i get a girl I was 345 when i started and i'm down to 274 13 weeks post-op and 13 pounds lost before i mean one uh 13 pounds lost before surgery do not do the surgery to avoid access and the weight is life-threatening yep absolutely melody i totally agree with you i think everyone should get a counselor not necessary prior to surgery but to help to recognize your weight absolutely i i saw a shrink my insurance i i have medical you know what's funny I paid for my surgery and I have full coverage insurance, health insurance, and through my husband's job. So it's not that my doctors didn't want to do it here. It's just that I wanted to go to somewhere that I, I researched so much and Pompeii just happened to be the better place. I could have gotten it done in the US, but again, I did two years of research and my research led me to Pompeii. And that's really where it is. 
Um, is it the best thing for everybody? No, but it was the best thing for me. And I am so happy that I made that choice because in my life, so many doors have opened. Unfortunately, because of weight loss, a lot of doors have opened and that sucks, but that's the reality of it. I'm so glad we got hubbies that are 100% supportive. It saddens me to see people on here talk about their marriages, relationships, even the strong ones before fell apart after losing weight. Absolutely. Hey, Brent. Um, Tracy, I agree with you. Unfortunately, not everybody gets the privilege of having a significant other who supports them or even family that supports them. Um, and, and that sucks. And I totally understand that. Um, I can't understand it from a... I can't understand it to fully. However, my husband prior to me getting surgery and prior to me educating him on the surgery he wasn't on board he was like i know three people who've passed away from it but he didn't know the, the details he didn't know the research he didn't know he wasn't educated he was just going based on a couple stories he had heard and so that's why i really educated myself my husband's the type of person that if you come with him with facts and you come with him with literature for him to read and you come with him for serious like with serious knowledge and you know facts he will take it in and he'll make his choice or will bring up his beliefs based on what he's read you know research wise so after I showed him the realities of it and the research and the education behind it he was like all right I support you in everything you do I see how much time and effort you put into this and never put in this much effort to something and I trust you so I'm gonna go ahead and support you and that was the best thing ever I told them look with or without you I'm gonna get it done <laughs> however I want you to be on board seriously and honestly um, and after doing the research and showing it to him he was on board and I actually made a video on my YouTube channel and it was a husband tag which you asked your husband and he's on it and he was like when you lose X amount of weight I'll do it <laughs> so um, so it was something pretty funny and, and, and a lot of people really liked that video. Yes, Pompeii was definitely life changing. Sean, oh my God, I haven't talked to you in such a long time. I hope you're doing well. Um, how is it going? I haven't seen any photos or updates on you. You have to DM me, send me a picture. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm really, really happy with my results with Pompeii. It's been 25 weeks and 107 pounds lost and I'm still going and I have yet to hit a stall, which I know I keep saying I have yet to hit a stall, but I'm fucking excited about it. I hear so many, that's amazing, Sean. Yes, I'm down to like a 1210. So I'm like, um, I, I've i lost 107 pounds and I still have a ways to go. I still have like a good 35, 40 pounds left because I want to get down to 160, 165, depending on what I feel. Um, and then after that, for six months, I'm going to tone, tone, tone as much as I can. And then after that, I'm going to get my weight loss surgery, which will be at the end of next year sometime. Uh, I'm sorry, not weight loss surgery, um, reconstructive surgery. Uh, so I'm really, really looking forward to that. I wanted to talk to you guys about what I eat. A lot of people always ask me, what do you eat? Um, what are your go-to meals? Um, I want to talk to you guys about macronutrients because a lot of people don't get it. A lot of people DM me and they're like, what do you eat? How much, how, what's your macronutrients? My macro, and I cannot scream this louder. People, please listen. Macronutrients for me, unless you have my exact stats, will not work for you. Because macronutrient numbers are based off of your height, your weight, your BMI, and your BF uh, percentage. Body fat percentage, BMI, weight and height and that will fluctuate every week or two as long as you're losing weight so you guys have to realize that what works for me if I go ahead and tell you yeah these are my macronutrients it's a thousand this calories or this many carbs or this much um, protein or this much fat intake it's not gonna work for you unless we have exactly the same stats which is almost impossible to have um, so I want you guys to understand that it's not because I don't want to share because a lot of people ask me and it's not because I'm being stingy with the information it's because everyone has a different macronutrients and if I tell you what works for me and you do it and it doesn't work for you it's because you have different stats than I do so I'm gonna at macros are 100% individual absolutely Sean absolutely I would suggest to everyone wanting to understand macronutrients go to the library it is free.com Go to the library and grab books about macronutrients, 
about how macronutrients works in the body and about you can also google i wouldn't google because when you go online to do the calculators where you put all this information in and it tells you it's not going to be accurate because it's different for people with weight loss surgery because it might tell you eat 1,800 or 2,300 calories a day. We can't do that because our stomachs won't be able to take that. Um, I would say to do it and then talk to a nutritionist, do one or two visits with a nutritionist, but make sure that nutritionist has worked with a great deal of um, bariatric weight loss patients. And not every nutritionist who's worked with bariatric weight loss patients understands how macronutrients work because some of them I heard they're like oh it doesn't matter yeah it does um I had I change my macronutrient numbers once every two weeks my numbers change every two weeks because I have been consistently losing weight whether it's a half a pound or whether it's 10 pounds I have been consistently losing weight and it's because I adapt my macronutrient numbers with my new stats every week so for example, let's say you do a calculator online, macronutrient calculator, how many carbs should I have? How many, you know, if I'm keto, how many calories should I have? How many, you know, how much protein should I have, et cetera, et cetera. It's gonna ask you your height, your weight, your body mass index, your body fat percentage. It's gonna ask you all these questions. It's gonna give you a weird number, which shouldn't work for you because that's for normal people. However, if you lose five pounds and you do it again, or if you lose 10 pounds and you do it again, it's gonna give you different numbers. So obviously that would tell you right there that you can't sustain the same macronutrient numbers weeks on weeks on weeks and get the results you want. So you have to change your macronutrient numbers to be able to reflect the weight loss that, excuse me, that you're having week to week. Now I'm gonna to talk to you about guys about how I figure my nutrient numbers out. Um, because I already know my body, I no longer do calculations. I just take a percentage off as I lose the weight uh, because I kind of became, I'm not gonna say a pro, but I already understand how my body works. Um, so for me, I always, no matter what my numbers are, the one thing that does not change is my carb intake. Because your body needs carbs, to, they need carbs to, to live. <laughs> you know, let's be real. Uh, you can't just go off of zero carbs. It's ridiculous. Even a ketogenic or bariatric keto diet tells you you need to have carbs. You just can't have shitty carbs. Let's be real. Don't eat bread and don't eat pasta and don't eat rice. Um, so I stick to between 30 and 35 grams of carbs uh, daily. Sometimes I go to 25. Sometimes I go to 30. Sometimes I go to 35. But I do not go over 35 grams of carbs. Um, and that works for me, but it might not work for you and you have to realize this. Everyone has a sweet spot number and I've played around with it so much that I understand already where my sweet spot is. Right now, my calorie intake is between 1,003 to 1,004. I try to go to 1,005 a day, but it can be difficult sometimes. Uh, fats and sugars, I'm not gonna get into because everyone is so different, it really doesn't matter. But I do, my hardest not to have any processed sugars if i have sugars it's coming from a fruit uh, and not not like a fruit cup that's that's full of shit sugars and i try not to do things that say sugar free because sugar free doesn't always mean sugar free if you look at the ingredients a lot of sugar free items have other sugars in there that are not granulated sugar because when they look at sugar free they're talking about granulated regular sugar and there's other sugars that are not great for you um, so I really look at labels and I make sure to have things that are sweetened with natural sweeteners like maybe a stevia stevia is a plant um, monk fruit is a fruit um, so anything that comes from natural sugars is what I try to stay you know towards or very low sugar count I'm not a diabetic, but I check my sugar just to make sure. Um, I check my blood pressure twice a day just to make sure because um, I've had problems in the past after surgery where my, my actual blood pressure will drop dramatically and I figured that out. It's because I didn't have enough salt. Salt is super important in your diet. Um, so make sure you're having enough salt. 
um, because that is a thing, especially with bariatric patients. Um, let me see. Protein. Protein doesn't change much either. The more protein you have, the better it is. I usually have between 80 and 100 or 120 grams of protein a day. Um, those two things, the carbs and the protein, are really not something that changes in, sh in sugar. Fat, I do do healthy fats. Fats are great for you because you are going to burn the fat as you work out and as you sustain yourself throughout the day. And it makes you, when things have higher fats, you usually are more fuller. Um, so the one thing that I really look at is a caloric intake is what I play with. Um, and the caloric intake is one of the most important things. And that's what really fluctuates um, with your changes. Um, what else? What else? That's really it. I do take my vitamins still. I'm taking my Tespo vitamins. I'm doing my biotin. And yeah, I have hair under here. You know, my, um, my hair has fallen out a little bit, like normal. You know, when you brush it, it comes out. Uh, but I'm not bald. I have regular, my regular hair. You see in pictures. Um, I take biotin. I take my Once Daily Woman's uh, liquid vitamin shot. I also, not a shot like shot in the butt I like it's a drink <laughs> I, I do the test bow um, and I mix it into a smoothie or something so I can't even taste it um, I do the bariatric one at, uh, twice a day in the morning and at night um, I do the calcium gummies and I also do the biotin gummies um, and that's really it for my vitamins and I've done my blood work plenty of times and all of it's coming out normal so I'm doing well on that I'm not having any deficiencies as far as what I eat in a day Oh, and I'm sorry, I haven't really posted anything on my YouTube in a while, just in like two or three weeks, because I've just been really busy. I got a new job a, a few months ago, and it's very, very, it's really been busy. Um, so I really don't have the time. That's why I'm doing live now. Um, my normal day of food, let's see. This morning, I had one sausage, bacon, cheese, egg bite that I made in the oven two days ago. I had two of those. Um, then I also made fresh squeezed orange juice. I only had three ounces of the fresh squeezed orange juice and I had, um, I mixed it, it, I mixed it, <laughs> I mixed it into a smoothie that I made. As usual, I'm a smoothie queen. I love to do my juices and juicing. That is a given. I usually have one fresh juice in the day and one smoothie that's fresh in the day. Um, for lunch, what did I have for lunch? What did I have for lunch? Oh, I had bratwurst. Uh, brat, bratwurst is, uh, like Bavarian bratwurst. It's like a sausage type of thing. Very, very high in protein. Very, very high in healthy fats. And no carbs, which is great. Um, I had that. And I also had some spinach, uh, cooked spinach with it. Um, for dinner tonight, mind you... I usually, I don't do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm just giving you guys that scenario because it's easier for everybody to, do, you know, and understand. I'm eating all day. I'm eating between three and five ounces, three and six ounces every like three or four hours. So my breakfast, I'll have like half of it early. Then two or three, two hours later, I'll have the other half. <coughs> Because if you have two egg cups, you might not finish both at one sitting. But you want to get your breakfast fully in. So I do a portion early, a portion a little later in the morning. Then I'll do my lunch. My lunch, I'll break it up into two meals. So you make sure you finish your food. Because if you're putting all of these macros into your apps or if you're writing them down, you're not going to get that real nutrients if you don't finish your food. So I make sure if I don't finish something now, in one to two hours, I'll pick at it again. Um, for dinner tonight, I'm not sure what I'm having for dinner tonight, but typically it would be like some ground turkey. Um, I'll do maybe a salad on the side um, or a bowl of uh, cucumbers with a little balsamic and some like some type of protein meat on the side. Again, I try to do all my proteins first, but then I, I make sure I go back and forth. Um, of course, I don't really drink while I eat because you get full. So I usually make sure that I'm having water throughout the day. Um, I don't really have a lot of Gatorade, but I do have it for the salt. Um, I'll do the sugar, the no sugar Gatorade. But again, that has a lot of shit in it. So I really try not to do it much. 
Um, I'll do it if it's like my last resort. I typically prefer just regular plain water and I'll put lemon inside and I'll put orange inside. Um, or I'll just have a fresh squeeze juice. Like I'll have, you know, cucumber, mint. I'll do infused waters. Like you have to take the time. A lot of people are like, oh, what? And you know, I'm not throwing shade. I'm not. But we had surgery to lose weight and change our lives. We can't just be like, okay, what's my healthy option at Burger King? Or what's my healthy option at McDonald's? This is not how it works. And I swear to you, I know I haven't had a stall in that one week because I'm not indulging in outside food. Yeah, do I have I had Panera? Absolutely. Have I had, um, what do you call that? Uh, I don't remember that place. Uh, Panera. I do Wawa's, but I do salads and I do chicken and I do the healthiest I can, but I don't do McDonald's. I don't do Wendy's. I don't do Burger King. None of that. That's just off the table for me. Um, I've completely changed my life and I've changed everything the way I look at food. Um, if it's a fast food place and they do not have an option that is kind of farm to table, like for example, Panera has better options as far as fast food goes even though I still don't indulge as much um but I'll have one of their salads um you know something I'm not going to Sonic ain't doing it why because all that shit is, is is just shit it's not good quality food you have to invest time and money into your health I am a firm believer of that if I want chips I do quest chips because if you read their ingredients it's a lot better than a regular bag of chips or kettle chips or whatever the case may be. I don't do none of that shit. I make sure that if I'm eating, eating something, it's the best version of what I'm having a craving for with the best ingredients. Um, and I'm sure that's why I haven't had a stall. And, and I'm very proud of that. It took, it's hard. Some people are like, oh, you make it look easy. No, it is not easy. It is hard to fight temptation. Like I have a pantry full of like, shit that my husband likes like oreo cookies n vanilla wafers um little fishies for my kids oh my god fruit snacks applesauce you know all these things that are <laughs> they're not the best things to have and i have them all at my disposable do i go no fuck that i have my quest chips right next to all that junk food and i eat my quest chips i do whatever is healthier the healthier option i have tons of ice cream <laughs> all this fun shit in my fridge because I have five kids and a husband that's six foot four and loves to eat um I'm not gonna take that away from them all my kids are healthy they don't and they don't eat on excess they don't eat a lot of junk food on excess because they've I've never allowed that even though I have um but I they know that they can have in small quantities um and now my family does eat healthy but i'm not gonna tell my husband oh you can't have some ice cream he's not overweight like i am you know what i mean he has he can take better liberties even though he's looked at his health differently since i've lost weight which i'm very very happy about so yeah these are a couple things that i eat i do eat uh thanks for being honest absolutely alexis absolutely um one thing that i always try to do is try to be realistic and honest because at the end of the day when if you're lying about things you're really lying to yourself point blank in a period you know some people are like oh you have no back fat I have tons of back fat it's just that I always wear a faja and I love my fajas <laughs> by the way someone asked me where I got my fajas from Walmart has some good fajas Kohl's has good fajas I'm, I can show you guys how one of them looks hold on This is the skin color faja that I wear. This is a size large. This is what it looks like. It it looks like a like a swimsuit. It snaps right here. And this is what it looks like. And it it I like the ones that are open here because um the name of this one is called here maiden form maiden form m-a-i-d-e-n f-o-r-m this is a large this is a little bit loose on me now so i have to go into the medium soon however this one has a thick strap 
and it it allows you to wear a regular bra. I don't do the Fajas that come with the built-in bras. I think they suck ass. <laughs> I'm wearing one now. I'll show you what it looks like. So, so y'all can see, I ain't trying to show you everything, but this one, it's like, it looks like a bathing suit. It's actually a little big on me now, so I have to go down a size, but it just smooths everything out. And yes, I have loose skin, see? But it smooths everything out. Actually, this is a size... 14 pants so it's a little bit big on me but I have to it's all good it'll be good for a while I gotta go down on my belts too but you see how it goes it lets you wear a bra still And all it really does uh, works super good. All yeah, I have a I have a couple. Uh, it's called Shapewear. It's a Colombian company. These are very breathable and comfortable. It feels like a bathing suit. Like it's these are so breathable. I'm gonna show you. They're very very stretchy. It just smooths everything out. And this, you see, it's it's very very thick. So the straps are comfortable. But this is very comfy like super comfy and it's not going up your ass or anything see it's nice and, and wide um, but these are very comfy that one I got from Kohl's for like 15 bucks thank you so much Alexis um, but yeah a faja oh Michelle a faja is one of these it's like um, are they really tight or hard to get off to use no Th this when I go take them off I literally all right so if if you are see and when I go to, because I hardly use the bathroom anymore and I don't know if that's a side effect before because I had I had kids I would use the bathroom every two seconds because my bladder just sucks however after surgery I don't use the bathroom as much I don't know what, what it is maybe because I'm not drinking as much water as I used to uh, because I just can't um, but I, I really don't have to use the bathroom. I maybe use the bathroom twice a day at the max like in the morning and at night however if you're the person that doesn't want to be taking this thing off every time you use a bathroom, it's not for you. Me, I take off my shirt and then I just push it down like my underwear and it's very easy to come off. If you don't want it to be super tight, you just get one size bigger. Try them on. You can try these on. Like when I went to Kohl's, I, tried, I brought a bunch of them into the fitting room. They allow you to try these on. So what I do is I try it on and I get one that feels comfortable and I try it on with clothes. I never get the one do not get the ones I'm gonna show you guys don't get the ones that come up to here like pants because I guarantee you it's gonna be tight and your pants you can tell with your pants I only get the ones I only get the ones that are like underwear because they look like a pair of underwear when you put them on and don't get it too tight if you don't want it to be tight don't get it too tight it really just helps to smooth out and it doesn't have to be super tight to smooth uh, because for example the ones I'm wearing now are larges and I should be in a medium but I still they still feel good to me um, and I'll show you so you see like it's not I'm not doing much um, they're still very loose um, it's very breathable see I can put my whole arm in here it's not like skin tight however it's still when I have clothes on it looks smooth and that's why I wear them and that's not the only reason I wear them. I wear them because it also helps for your skin. The tighter you have it, the better it is. What's some advice that you recommend for new sleep families? My surgery was 816. What do you mean? Give me like more of a specific question as far as like 
how do you deal with foods? Sierra, this, this, this is for you who just asked what some advice is for newsly families. On my YouTube channel, I don't know if this is something that might help you, but I did do a, a Q&A with my husband on my YouTube channel. And if you go to YouTube, all you gotta do is um, search Sue Lady VSG, S-U-E-L-A-D-Y-V-S-G, and I'm gonna write it down for you guys. So my husband did a Q&A where I asked him a bunch of questions online, like that they had online, and he answered them. This is my YouTube and my Instagram. I think it's backwards. Whatever. Sue Lady VSG. S U E L A D Y V S G. Um, and if you look like from the beginning, you see a bunch of different type of videos, um, and that might actually help you a lot. Um, it's my husband answering a bunch of questions as to how it's affected our lives and stuff like that. Um, and a lot of people say that it's been very, very um, helpful. Um, I might do one with my mom. She's, sometimes she sees me and she's like, I'm not used to seeing you like this, which is funny. Um, but I really don't think it's impacted us in a bad way. It's impacted us in a very good way. My kids look at food differently. They look at me differently. You know, my daughter looks up to me to a degree where instead of it just being mommy, 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 she's like, mommy's healthy. Mommy always makes healthy options. When she goes and I'm like, what do you want as a snack? She's like, I want a healthy snack. Even though I've always, like, I've never given my kids junk food. Yes, we have some Oreos and shit in the pantry, but I've never wished for them to eat the way I eat, ate before. Because before, I used to eat kind of like, with nobody watching me, like stuff extra Oreos down. Let's be real. That's just how it was. And that's how we all got here. Let's be real. Um, however, uh, I've really been able to better my relationship with food. And in turn, my kids just have a better relationship with food too. They kind of all start following suit. You know, my husband sees me, you know, shopping more often, which he is totally for. Um, he's like, wow, you know, that's, that's a nice outfit. And before, it would be a nice outfit because I try to dress to impress regardless. However, now I can shop in places where there are more chicer things instead of going to Avenue at a size 22, you know, uh, where they don't have the better options. So, you know, he's noticing that more too, and he's noticing a better, a more confidence a bigger confidence in me and he's like it's really refreshing to see that you're very happy with yourself uh, you being happy with yourself makes me happier you know which is great um so i really i be more specific i'm not sure if i'm answering your question um if you want to dm you can dm me um anyone who ever has a question everyone knows that i try to answer everyone's questions um there are some questions like some people try to ask me hey can you send me your diet plan i'm not a dietitian and i don't have time for that <laughs> so Please, whenever you guys message me or if anyone's messaging me, don't ask me what my whole diet plan is because that's not my job. You know what I mean? I'm here to support everyone. I'm here to share my journey with everyone, but I'm not a dietitian and I don't get paid to do that. However, I am very, very, I try to be as helpful as possible with as much information as I possibly can, but I'm not going to give you a whole written out detailed, you know, um, notebook of what to eat. You gotta do your research. You gotta really, really, you know, see what works best for you. Because whatever works for me might not work for you. So that's really the best advice I can give anyone. <clears throat> How's everyone doing? Hey, Brittany, you look fabulous. Yes. <laughs> I'm so happy seeing everyone's journeys. Oh, someone asked me if I eat junk food still. Do I eat, you know, sweets? Yes. I don't not eat sweets. I absolutely do, not all the time, not every day, but do I give myself a little something? Yes, once in a while. It might not be every week and it might not be every two weeks, but it sure is at least once a month. For example, I've got an airhead. I've had this in my purse for like a month and a half. And tonight, mama's gonna fuck this up. <laughs> However, I'm just trying to explain to y'all that you know, having the surgery doesn't mean that you don't, you can't indulge once in a blue moon, but you have to have self-control because some people can look at this and say, Ooh, it's a small little piece, but then it can filibuster into other things. If you're a person who, you know, you haven't jumped over that hurdle yet and haven't taken control of your impulses, then this is not a good idea even to have not even once. I just started eating little things like this once a month. This, like, and I won't even finish this whole thing. I'll have like half of it, and then the other half I'll share with like somebody. 
or I'll throw it out. However, this, I'm gonna tell you what the macronutrients is. This whole thing is 60 calories. That means if I have half, that's only 30 calories. I'm not going into a bad deficit. Carbs is 15 for the whole thing. That's why you are so disciplined on nature. Girl, it, it took time. I, did, I wasn't like this, you know, my whole life. It took time. So this has 15 grams of carbs. Y'all need to understand something. If I eat half, that's what? About seven and a half gram of carbs. I can only have 30 to 35 in the day. That's taking up a lot of carb real estate for me. So with that being said, I wait until a day that I know I'm gonna have very low carbs or until I feel like I'm good and ready. Like I've had this again for a month and a half in my purse and I'm gonna have a little piece today. But it doesn't mean that I have this on a regular basis and it doesn't mean that I indulge on a regular basis and I look at all of the macronutrients. All right, another thing to look at is sugar. This is 11 grams of sugar, includes 11 grams of added sugars. That means you're getting five and a half grams of regular sugar and five, that's 11 grams total in a half a piece. So that's why I haven't eaten it in a month and a half. <laughs> However, today I was very, very good. I had zero sugar today. So this is gonna fit in my macros. And I won't have it until I'm done eating for the day. Because if I have a half of it now, and then I go and have something that has sugar later, that's going overboard. And so that's why I haven't hit a stall. Cause mama don't play no games. And I'm taking this very seriously. And trust me, I'm not just gonna take it seriously until I reach my goal. And then once I reach my goal, okay, I'm gonna go back to the shit eating. No, it's a lifestyle change. And I really feel that that's why I really feel that that's why I have been able to lose what I have lost. Anyway, I think that's, I don't think anybody has any more questions. Does anybody have any more questions at all? Let me say hi before I go. <laughs> you like my little cheetah print head wrap? I do have hair, I promise. I have hair in here. <laughs> I have short hair, but I have hair. It's just my hair looks like shit right now. That's why I'm wearing a head wrap. Because it looks like S-H-I-Z shit. Anyway, I hope that the conversation has helped. I hope that you guys learned a little bit of something new today. And thank you so much for following. You guys have been great. Um, send me a DM. I'm always willing to talk. I'm always willing to share. I'm always willing to listen. And um, if you guys want to see more like videos in depth of earlier on, I'm 25 weeks post-op now. However, I've had videos every week from pre-op actually from before pre-op from the first day of highest weight i've had videos every week all the way until i think 12 to 15 weeks post-op so you guys can check out the, uh, those videos on my youtube which is sue lady vsg s-u-e-l-a-d-y v-s-g sue lady vsg and the same thing goes for my instagram anyway it was so nice talking to you guys today i hope you're doing very very great and if you're thinking of doing the surgery you are not going to regret it if you've done it, I'm proud of you and congratulations. And I really, really am looking forward to everyone's journey. I love watching everyone. I love seeing what everyone posts. Um, and yeah, so have a good one. Bye.